Hello, Mixer. Hopefully everyone's having a lovely day. I am having a great day tonight. Day. Today. Tonight. Can I speak? I don't know. Uh, doing chicken tonight. We got some chicken breasts that I bought in the frosted earlier today. And we'll salt these, even though I'm not going to cook these for a little while. We'll let them, uh, try and pull out as much moisture as we can before we, uh, put them in the pan to sear them. Grab a little pepper here while we're at it. Well, MSG too, why not? You'll notice it, it's almost more like longer flakes when it's here on than salt. It's not granules, it's like actual crystals, like flakes of crystals. It's uh, interesting stuff. But we're going to take this and we're going to set this over here. I got my fan blown at me like usual so that I'll have some air blown over the top of it. Uh, it'll help us it come to full room temp and it's a nice even temp and uh, so we'll probably cook that around eh, 5.30ish, 6ish. Um, since it's doing chicken breasts, we're doing chicken breasts with this, we, we're not going to be worried about breaking it down and letting it cook a long time. Um, I know I use the term braise. but. Uh, Basically, we're just going to be searing in the pan and then finishing it in the liquid. So it's sort of a braise, but sort of a stew. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, I'm sort of doing a refrigerator clean out here of veggies. I've got all sorts of stuff that uh, just uh, needs to go. <laughs> so we're going to use up all that. And I'm going to try a brand new uh, recipe tonight uh, doing uh, uh, yeast rolls. It's been so long since I worked with yeast that I had to buy new yeast. Um, and so maybe you'll see some more of that out of me here. Probably not a ton. Uh, I'm not a big baking guy. Uh, but uh, I, I've, been, I've been known to, to dabble here and there. Uh, so we're doing... This recipe calls for two and a half cups of flour, either bread or AP. I'm using AP because I didn't want to buy, I didn't have any bread flour and I didn't want to buy any extra. Um, even though I know bread flour will give you a much better flavor and uh, probably final product. I'm going to go with AP because it's what I got. This is a brand new, new uh, bag of flour. You watch the stream, I opened this up, uh, I think, within the week. Okay. So we got our flour. Just give this a quick sift, make sure there's no nasty stuff in it. Not that there really ever is in my nice quality organic flour. But, uh... In the old days, you used to find rocks and stones and stuff in there, and uh, helps a lot with with the actual final product too. The uh, big goods are often better if they're using sifted flour. It, it just gets a better. I guess it just mixes better. I'm not quite sure what that is, so I'll pull that out. Not quite sure what these are either. So we'll pull those out too. Anyways, uh, let's look up this recipe, see how much salt and other lovely stuff I'm throwing in here. Um, one and a half teaspoons of insta yeast or yeast. 
I bought myself a new giant Fleischmann's yeast, giant brick of yeast. Just like, and it's vacuum packed, like hard vacuum packed. Good, nice, fresh yeast. I am just showing you my main camera, aren't I? I should be showing you this. There we go. Some nice new yeast with our sifted flour. doing three of these bad boys in here. I'm going to spread it around. This is a half teaspoon. We're using a teaspoon and a half. And we're not proof, we're not uh, testing out ahead of time. First of all, it's, I mean, I just opened the container. So I'm not too worried about that. But also, yeast these days is usually pretty reliable. Uh, they, they've got bread yeast down to a science. So, get that a nice close there. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not going to worry about it. We'll give that a good stir in there because we don't want our yeast to be hanging out with our salt. Yeast and salt are not good friends. Salt. So you're using a tablespoon of salt. And I'm gonna add some black pepper in here. I mean, these are dinner rolls. They're using it for something sweet or trying to keep it neutral, but there we go. Of course they want warm water. We want warm water because we're using yeast. I should be thinking about that. Uh, <laughs> we need one cup and one tablespoon. weird. It says one cup and, and one tablespoon of hot water, but it uh, also, it has it like separated in this recipe, but there's nowhere else in the recipe that they're referencing a tablespoon separate from the cup. And I can't think of a place where 
you would want to add more moisture. Okay, so hot water. Try and prevent my hands from getting dirty as much as possible. You know they're going to get absolutely covered here, this one hand at least. And I'm just gonna make sure this is all mixed together. It all sort of comes together into a dough. Not going to need it too much. I'm just trying to get all this flour to combine in there. Okay. So we're now going to let this hang out for an hour on the counter here and allow the yeast to do its thing. Uh, have it burp or fart out enough CO2 to. Uh, create some rise in our, our dough. is to plastic wrap that so I will come and wrap it with the mega roar I keep calling this the mega roll and talking about bragging how long it's lasted me it's gonna die one of these days on stream It's ridiculous how, thing, how long this thing has lasted me. I don't know how many boxes of this I went through in my most recent business. But no, the one around home's just been kicking around for years. got that. Let's cut up our veggies, have all of our veggies ready. Um, start a one hour timer here for our bread. We've already got some chicken stock defrosted as well. Made, uh, I don't know if that stream is still available in my VODs or not, or if it's already uh, timed out. Mixer likes to delete our VODs and uh, mostly defrosted. There's a little bit of ice still in there. but So we'll be using that as the base for our liquid and we'll add a little bit of a, a half and half because I have half and half that's on the edge and I want to use it up. Uh, but we got a lot of veggies here too. Actually let's open the wine first. I need, I need a drink. <laughs> and what am I going to drink out of? How about this guy? Even though he's watermarked. I don't think it's what this microfiber cloth was originally intended for, but I use this cloth pretty much uh, exclusively is my for glass polishing when I'm
Things should fall, stop stop the eight ball. Wow, it's been a while since I played some Q. Some sick. It's been at least three, four years, because I uh, got LASIK and I've only played like a handful of games since LASIK. But I've never been I, playing around in bars. I used to be okay at bars, but competitions, no chance. Though I have been sort of uh, addicted by the YouTube videos about uh, Snooker in the last couple of years here. Rather amazing game. Long and difficult compared to regular pool. He is, don't you know? So I've had this before on stream. I like this uh, white. It's a uh, nice minerally Spanish white wine. Pretty clean, not a lot of oak, not a lot of wood to it. Nice and uh, light fruit flavors. Good stuff. Uh, so veggies. We're gonna chop up some tomatoes, some onions. Absolutely a horrible time of year for tomatoes and this isn't this is actually sort of impressive for you know February but it's definitely Mexican imported. Nice, nice. Yeah, I do a little bit of everything. I got a couple of bourbon bourbon uh bottles over here in my, my cabinet over here. Um, working on a uh, bottle of uh, small batch four roses, and uh, I've got a barely. I've got like maybe one glass left of uh, Woodford Reserve. I occasionally pull out a sniff. Uh, why did I just say a snifter? Don't use that for that. <laughs> I occasionally pull out a Glen Cairn and uh, guy's dirty right now, but um, try some whiskeys. I've done uh, margaritas on channel too. Um, not a big beer guy. I don't hate beer. It's just not what I choose to drink a lot of the time. Um, and I wouldn't consider myself, well, I've, I've brewed beer, uh, I wouldn't consider myself an expert or someone who drinks enough to know whether this one's better than that one or something like that. Same goes for wine, but I'm trying to learn a little bit more. Well, I've forgotten a lot more than I know these days. You've missed earlier, we got chicken breasts out here on the counter, uh, salted, and we're pulling out as much moisture out of them as we can while we're waiting. Figure we'll leave our, to our, our, uh, yeast rolls 
here to uh, ferment and or to uh, proof and we'll cut up the veggies while it's proofing and then we'll do the chicken after after we're done turning them into rolls and doing our second rise. Hey Wolf. Good stuff. I think you've seen me drink this one before. It's uh, that Spanish white I had before. It's just a, such a good deal. I mean, it's a $24, $25 wine. I'm getting it for $14.15. Use up the last of this garlic clove. That guy ain't looking too hot. American garlic. Eh, rather boring. Hung around home. Now that I've thoroughly got my finger sticky from the garlic and gotten all the paper off of it, or skin. Well, let's give this a quick rough chop. Oh, is it raining out there? It's a quite beautiful day today here. It was almost 70 degrees. So I feel sorry for all those people complaining about the snow. Sort of. Not really. Use up our scrap onion from the other day here. Why you gotta be difficult onion, huh? Why you gotta stick my blade and all that fun stuff? Why can't you just dice easily, like the other half will?
can use up the rest of this ginger from the other day too. Give ourselves a fresh cut there. Get rid of the stuff that's dried out. And I'm not worried about the skin here. Especially since I'm just going to slice it super thin against the grain. Yeah, why not? Almost threw a container out. Nah, it's been been sort of freaky nice. Uh, not winter here. Normally it's rainy here all winter, and not like thunderstorm hail rainy here. It's usually like dreary. What you think of Seattle rain here during January, February? And then it doesn't rain again until December, and uh, we get firestorms, which another whole head of broccoli here but I think I'm gonna just use the stem you can chop it up and throw it in with the onions there and give it a decent long cook I'm gonna cut it along this bruise here so I can cut the bruise out easily ourselves fresh bottom then the rest of this I mean it's got fibers going through it down this way but uh, it's pretty good uh, root veg territory and if you want to add that to anything you're doing like mirepoix with you'll get a little bit more well you'll obviously get the broccoli flavor but it'll uh, fit right in veggie wise so we'll Sort of cut it thin against the, the fiber or the grain or whatever you will. I'm not a, one for remembering proper scientific names. Processes, methods, designs, that's one thing. I'll remember those. But names, dates, in one ear, out the other.
just me, myself, and I. Um, how I sort of operate is I uh, make dinners for several nights. And so this is Sunday. This will cover me at least uh, through uh, Tuesday. Uh, now I'm back here on Wednesday. Do three streams a week. I do Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm doing things because I've got enough food around the house. I did, uh, pickled eggs the other day. But, uh, well, that's also the way I cook. I use lots of veggies. Um, I've been working out of the farmer's markets here in Sonoma County for the last several years and uh, so I know I know all the all the local vendors and all that good stuff made these guys about half a week old now the vinegars uh, emphasizing all of my poor peeling techniques Sweating and the stove ain't even on. Still got about another 40 minutes here until we get this uh, dough going. I'm thinking I'm going to start ahead of, with the chicken. We can just let the chicken, well, we'll let everything else just sort of simmer here. I used those uh, pickled eggs. I made those pickled eggs on Wednesday, and then on Friday I used them with a, uh, basically chopped them up, took a little bit of the vinegar brine, and made a mayo from the vinegar brine, and uh, used that to make an egg salad sandwich with a bagel on Friday. So, been around since Wednesday. And I do theme streams. I try and come up with stuff. I try and find things. Right now I'm sort of in a lull of I'm, I'm just doing what comes to mind at the moment. But uh, I, I did do a sort of tailgating theme for the Super Bowl. Uh, I've done uh, the pork chops from uh, Apex Legends. I've done, uh, uh, I did the egg in a hole sandwich that Ninja did with Bon Appetit. Um, and yeah, just uh, Friday. Friday's theme was oranges because uh, we're in the prime of orange season here. Citrus is best in winter. So I made orange chicken with uh, uh, broccoli and uh, I did a orange curd which turned out too loose but only because I put too much orange juice in it, but I still enjoyed it. So we'll get our pan going here. Throwing a little sunflower oil. Even though we've got some salt and seasoning on the chicken, we're going to pull off as much moisture once again. Even though my you would think my cast irons would take a long time to heat up. They heat up faster than this guy because this guy's got a pretty significant thick bottom on him. Though once he heats up. It's 
turn our fan on here. Close the bedroom door so I don't set off my smoke alarm. Got our padded dry chicken. And I still don't think we're up the temp. Sunflower does have a pretty high smoke temp. Without looking, I think it's around 500. And it doesn't say. Oh well. Let's switch mics so you can hear the sizzle too. Make sure that it actually switched because yay. Okay. Skin side down even though there isn't skin. Go ahead and hit the other side here with some salt while we're at it. We're really just giving this some color and not really worried about cooking it through. So I will probably cook it most of the way through. Uh, just to try and get as much color as I can. Oh my, I forgot my beautiful mushrooms that I bought for this dinner. We got more chopping to do. I'm not going to use all of these. This would be a ridiculous amount of mushrooms to use for one dinner. But, we have, let's see how these guys are doing. I have these for a minute. These are probably dry. Wild shiitakes are, they're not really wild, he, he inoculated the area to grow them. Um, we got some beautiful hedgehogs. And we'll throw some oysters in there too. Sort 
tucking the tenderloins back up on top of it because if I leave that on there separate, it's going to cook way too much. No, not this time of year. The tomato's Mexican. Um, not sure in the, the yellow onion there, but this one's uh, Sonoma grown. These are Sonoma grown. These are Sonoma forage. These are commercially Sonoma grown. Um, Sonoma grown, not sure on the broccoli, not sure on the uh, garlic or ginger. But I do do a lot of farmer's market purchases. We're just in the worst time of year to be buying it. Now, we're not going to have decent veggies until mid to late March again. bakers here in Sonoma too, uh, as far as the small guys. There's, there's not many businesses that survive in Sonoma County because of the labor expenses and real estate expenses here. Real estate making the labor expensive. Um, but there's a couple of small guy bakers that have, have uh, worked, somehow made it work. And there's some great bakers around here. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, most of that will be available uh, May through like September for me. Corn, much more spotty. Corn's one of those things when it's fresh, it's fresh. You gotta sell it now, it's gotta go. Um, so farms will have it, but they'll have it for like two weeks. oil in this pan. thing I find most amazing around here is I'll find, we'll probably have strawberries like second week of March and they'll go till like November. We, we like constantly have local strawberries and they're amazing. We'll pull that off, we'll cut our heat down to about a halfway. Add our onion, garlic, and ginger. That pan needs to be deglazed, so I'm going to use a little bit of my I have a box of Chardonnay wine on the corner here.
that killed our heat a little too much, but we'll survive. So, pinch the stems. Stems sort of make it obvious that, look, that they're mushrooms, but uh, the stems are going to have the most fiber. I, uh, I'll save these guys too. Um, I typically save the stems and use them for stock when I make stock. I need to make pork stock here soon. I'll be making that on stream in some season. Blueberries we get sort of in two different segments and it's because we have we have some low altitude blueberries and we some, have some high altitude blueberries and they have separate seasons. Like I said, I've had these shiitakes kicking around for a minute, so they're not the freshest. The hedgehogs I bought and, and the oysters I bought earlier today. The shiitakes are a great source of umami. Oyster mushrooms will sort of complete that because uh, with mushrooms you'll get sort of the different parts of umami uh, from different ones and so you'll sort of get half of it from the oysters and half of it from the shiitakes. And then the hedgehogs are just awesome with the meat chicken dish. mushroom business in, in Sonoma County too. The, uh, there's a couple of different businesses that are growing around and instead of using caves, which at least according to them, you know, uh, marketing material, uh, you can get infections in caves and caves will uh, then be permanently ruined for business. And so what they've done is instead of uh, outfitting caves for growing their mushrooms, they're using old chicken houses because they can drain them. They're designed to uh, clean up all the chicken shit. So they can do the same thing with the mushrooms and just flush the floors. That's smelling good. You can really smell the ginger off of that. We'll add, uh, our broccoli and our carrots now. And we're going to get a little uh, army green here with our broccoli, but going to overcook it a little bit, but it's just going to be part of the whole braise, so I'm not too, too upset about that. Even if you're drinking, you got to stay hydrated.
our ball of dough hasn't seemed to have risen much at all, maybe. I don't know. It's pretty warm, though. So since we got those guys started, we'll pull these off now. Just because I think we'll do a better job getting a decent sear on those mushrooms if we don't have all these other veggies in the pan. Silicone handle slipping on me. There we go. Bit more oil in the pan. Still got a flame on pretty high. We're at about Oh, 80% of maximum flame. Let the pan heat up a little bit more here. Hedgehogs are pretty easy to tell which ones are uh, kind of the woods because they all have little spikes, their gills are spiked. Actually sort of interesting. Sort of like to learn foraging mushrooms. I've gone out foraging with with people that know what they're doing before, but I sort of like. I feel like I don't know enough and trust myself enough. I'd like to learn more. I'd like to do more on that. Uh, I'd like to learn more about that. I'd like to m learn more about uh, uh, the newer methods or newer the rediscovered methods of fermentations. The stuff that uh, Noma and the Japanese are toying with. But if you're new to the channel, I do, uh, the, the only real thing that I sort of try to promise people is I try and do something different every day. Uh, doesn't, I may do similar recipes, but I change up how I do them, that sort of a thing. Uh, I, I can't be too, too adventurous with every show doing it three days a week. But uh, I try and make things fun and change, change it up. Make things fun. Yeah. You can speak, Jason. instant mushroom. It's like you're taking a bath in mushroom right now.
mushrooms will soak up oil like mad, so you gotta keep an eye on your pan. This, I'm gonna need some more oil here to keep these cooking. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that oyster mushrooms will eat oil. So, I mean, the idea that they absorb quite a bit sort of makes sense. Add our tomatoes. Add the rest of our veggies back in. We're still going to keep the chicken out. Made previously uh, on stream. I do stock every once in a while. Like I was saying earlier, I'm gonna have to do pork stock here again soon. So this is 24 ounces. I literally have hundreds of those stock bags because I used to uh, sell it. So I have a couple of cases of those from my old business are kicking around. Great for storing stock and, and stuff in the freezer. We get rid of our poultry board here. Actually, I'm just going to rinse it so I can use it again because we're not sure that that chicken's cooked through. I'm trying to use up some of this half and half that's on the edge here. Since we're cooking it, it won't matter if it's a little past done. The 
bring this up to a simmer. Got another eight minutes here on our bread. Just a yummy wine. Acidic, minerally, light fruits. Like next to no oak or wood. It's my understanding that, that we can't be sponsored by age restricted uh, products, so I am not advertising uh, any of the alcohols or liquors that I'm trying out here. I'm paying for them myself. So if you think someone with six viewers is uh, getting sponsors left and right, I think you're a little confused to begin with. <laughs> but I have gotten the question before. I've gotten people, uh, oh, you were gone longer than that, Wolf. <laughs> you're good. 40 minutes, 50 minutes. That was my job earlier today, Stop the eight ball. I was watching uh, another stream this morning and doing laundry. Wolf, you off playing COD again? Get that up to a simmering temp. Cut up our chicken here. Just going to slice it and maybe half it and then slice it. Get all that juice in there, all that flavor. ID shows You mean the channel? I had YouTube TV until December and I canceled it in TV in December because I mean when I started with YouTube TV it was I think it was 30 or 35 bucks and we're up to 55 and change now and all they're doing is adding channels that I could really care less about. for 65 just barely but we're gonna throw it back in with this liquid anyway so this is 
give you a good idea of what I mean by slightly under. It's just barely pink. Just barely still rosy. Back this down so it's just at a boil. Or just barely at a boil. chicken. I wasn't overly impressed, but I thought it was properly seasoned. I've, I've been jaded now where I can, I mean, I don't even want to buy the Mary's organic chicken now just because the difference in flavor from properly raised chicken. It's just night and day. So many things. I can't stand, uh, I'm, Wolf, you know I've ranted about this before, but I can't stand supermarket celery. I mean, the farmers, the farmers markets can't keep, compete with a dollar a head celery that's organic, but it tastes like crap, dirty water. I, I can't stand it. So we're just going to let this simmer while we uh, finish out our bread here. Which we're now done with our hour on the bread. So we got our bread here, which really hasn't risen at all here, which is not inspiring much hope for this new recipe. Getting the hiccups here. Uh, we're only making six rolls with this, so we might be okay. It's got a little bit of a hint of lime to it, or at least that cool, refreshing type wine flavoring. Probably more the acidity mimicking lime is what I'm getting at. Okay, cover with left scrap and let stand at room temperature for an hour. I guess we're making eight eight rolls. So we'll do main plus stove. And we'll attempt to get some more flour on my shirt. So 
sort of need this by folding it over a couple of times. It's, it's a no-need bread that we're kneading. Okay, I'm not doing that now. Cutting this into half. Turn our oven on to 450. And I'm just going to ball these normally like those. I'm, I'm giving up on this whole no need thing. It's, it's basically telling us to need it anyways. I need to roll you into the ball. There we go. I'm trying to show you what I'm sort of trying to do with my hand there. So you're constantly folding it and turning it. You can sort of ball it into a small little ball. Not hugely successful. It's not sticking the way I would like to the wooden board. Now, if we get any real bakers in the chan channel, I'm going to get criticized for only doing this one-handed. Because real bakers do this two-handed, which is not me. Don't have plans yet for Wednesday. I know I haven't been been uh, keeping up on making plans ahead of time much lately. Chicken. Have a good one, Legacy. Sorry I didn't read that message until just now. So we're just going to let that simmer here while I get the bread going. I still got some egg noodles that I'm going to finish up in there. So, not quite done with that, but so it'll be a nice sort of, I don't know what to call it, sort of a stew, sort of a soup, sort of a braise. <laughs>
make sure you can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, you can sort of see what I'm doing. I've only got a single monitor for my streaming PC, which I don't really want a second monitor because I don't really have room for it, but it, it does greatly limit well, what all I can see at once. I'm sort of switching between chat and video and OBS. My recipe. Probably kick this fan back down to low. Wow. Don't usually hear fire trucks coming past my house. not in the proper place to hear them. So I'm going to again let these guys chill out here for another 30 minutes or so, rest, relax before we uh, shock them in the oven at that 450 degrees, which I think is really what their, their trick is to getting these to go without a ton of kneading. Um, but, so we'll clean off our counter here and get rid of our flour. So again, as I said earlier, this I'm using a ton of veggies, and I am sort of doing a, a veg a veg refrigerator clean out, but uh, I do work with a lot of veg normally. Yeah, we've got uh, he's he's sort of a uh, he's doing a good job at it, but he's sort of a beginner uh, bread baker. We've got uh. E Wizard doing Sunday streams, doing desserts and bread uh, here on Mixer. Um, I was watching him earlier this morning. I've, I've worked in baking. Um, I've, I've got experience doing that. I've got, a, as I was saying earlier in his stream, uh, I have nightmares of cutting cheesecakes because at one point I was working at a small community college and having to cut portion uh, 60 cheesecakes into individual desserts every week. Uh, not something I ever want to do again. <laughs> but uh, I've, I've worked baking and I'm okay with it. I, I could probably pass with it as a job. I'm just not the type of person that wants to sit here and make sure all of my measurements are exact so that it properly rises and properly I'm much more of a fan of the simpler like a lot of the times I've done like one of the pictures that's currently in my slideshow from my start and finish is of a, a Dolce de Leche tart and I just used a one two three dough for the tart for the tart dough which 
I, I occasionally make a, a Blitz Puff Pastry, but that's because I'm so familiar making Blitz Puff Pastry from my business in the past. So now we're sort of chilling time, letting those uh, rolls uh, rest and relax and get the, get the uh, gluten to uh, relax a little bit before we shock them in the oven. We've got our oven still heating up, so we're not quite hot enough in the oven to put them in there even if we were ready. We got our chicken done other than adding our uh, egg noodles. The other thing that I'm lacking is I don't have a mixer. Um, it, it's, it's pretty high on my priority at this point, but uh, I don't have a mixer to do. Like last night, I, I made a, uh, a curd, whipped cream, and a mayonnaise with nothing but my hand power. Uh, I, I, I need a mixer pretty bad, but uh, I do have my beautiful gallon and a half Vitamix back here in the corner, but. It, it sort of takes a, an interesting uh, individual to make it in the bread world, um, especially in the restaurant bread world, because uh, they're, they're typically the type that are you know, they're awake at night time. They're, they're working during the night for the morning. Yeah, I've had a Vitamix on my list here, or actually more of a commercial Vitamix on my, my uh, wish list here for probably five or ten years now. Um, I keep hesitating, hesitating because I don't want to buy one of the ones with the, the plastic gears and have it just go on me. Um, I want one of the older belt-driven ones. Power. My cell phone hidden from the corner there. Still loving my new uh, mid-range uh, Rita glasses. I got two of these guys and two champagne glasses as part of my holiday gifts this year. How long does it say we're supposed to leave these guys after we ball them?
to give these guys another 10 minutes here. She says they won't rise, but they've already risen a little bit, at least the bigger guys. This guy's risen, this guy's risen. That guy's got a little bit of rising going on. Not very accurate with my, my portioning here. We've, we've got some serious uh, deficit between. Everyone out there in Mixture Land having a good evening. And we got anyone got any questions, any concerns, complaints?
we'll toss this guy out. Be right back. We'll throw the buns back in the oven here soon. planted my uh, garden on the first of the year, or at least I planted uh, 50 plants the first of the, the first of the month, and uh, not the first of the year, first of the month, and I'm amazed. I mean, we're a week couple in here, and like a good 60% of them are, are out with their sprouts and uh, looking healthy. I'm going to have to thin a couple of them out, actually, I think. I got, I rent my little house that I've got here, my little, one little bedroom, uh, granny house, cottage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I got a uh, raised bed and back, and so uh, didn't do a whole lot with it last year. Mostly grew cover cups, trying to build up the soil. But I'm fixing to go and pick up a county, uh, uh, pick up a yard of. Uh, compost from the county and uh, we'll fill that right up and put all sorts of stuff in there for me to use on stream here this summer. Uh, actually the way the, these plants are turning out I'll have stuff in May. <laughs> I've got sauce tomatoes, I've got yellow tomatoes, I've got beef steaks, I've got watermelons, ancient watermelons, a heirloom brand. I've got rainbow carrots. I've got ox heart carrots which are uh, just a little short little stubby fat you know like like a heart uh, carrots. I've got chives. I've got thyme. I've got eight different strawberry plants. I've got sunflowers. Uh, I'm growing gem corn so maybe we'll make some gem corn popcorn here this uh, late summer. And I'm growing some milkweed for the butterflies, not necessarily for myself. <laughs> yeah, peppers pop sort of late. Um, I have a couple of peppers that I'm growing too. Uh, pepper Himo Togagashi, which is a heirloom. And I've got orange sweet peppers too. Sort of wondering where I'm probably going to end up doing another batch of, of uh, plants here because I'm certain I've got another stack of seeds somewhere around this house. I just didn't. I know I've had more seeds from the past that I don't. I don't know where they went. So I, I may have to make a second round of plants here if I find that second stack of seeds. Yeah, I can't do hot stuff these days. I'm getting too old. Uh, I did make a stab at making a sort of... I used Frank's a little bit. Um, um, made a stab in early October, September. Uh, I made a fermented... Uh, I was calling it not-so-hot sauce. This sort of, sort of would be like a sweet pepper sort of trying to emulate my own Franks, but uh, that along with my own ketchup and several other projects got wiped out because of uh, PG&E and the wildfires. The uh, wildfires kicked me out of my house for a couple of days. I was actually under evacuation in mid-October, and uh, they cut my, my kitchen they cut my power out for better part of a week and uh, I was I was lucky my, my freezer got up to uh, uh, low 30s in Fahrenheit uh, just right right there at the frosted uh, which 
meant it was safe, but also meant that everything that was in my freezer was not nearly as good as it was before, because if you've ever thawed meat out and then froze it again and tried to cook it, it loses flavor. I've... And so everything that was in my refrigerator at that point, or my freezer, uh, was salvageable, but not nearly as good as it used to be. And I ended up tossing everything in my refrigerator out. Not fun. I'm not happy with PG&E right now. Though, I don't know many people who are. <laughs> I've, I've been there with the vinegar and peppers and yeah. I haven't quite been to the, to the point where I'm pulling my gas mask out, which... I have a gas mask too because of these freaking wildfires, but <laughs> I haven't pulled that out for peppers. culinary school. I went to the Culinary Institute of America and uh, one of my classmates was getting rid of a microwave and so his prank for his haul was to plug in the uh, microwave with hot peppers in it. Destroy the hot peppers in it and when it got too bad for his dorm room he yanked it out and then threw it and left it in the elevator. Good old Justin. But certainly interesting life at the Culinary Institute. I mean, it's probably the only school that college that you'll go to where you go to a kegger and they're they're using the firework the fireplace to make hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, our, our keggers had, had barbecues and... <laughs> uh, one of the guys in my class, in my bachelor's class, uh, you know, about once a month or so would, would hold, uh, would do a 24-hour smoke on some brisket and, uh, or at least an overnight. Well, it's not a big enough school to have the greatest parties. I mean, I'm sure we didn't have, you know, I'm sure there's, uh, you know, big colleges that have much more impressive parties. But uh, ours certainly have our own, ours certainly had our own flair. Yeah, like, like I said, literally one of the places that, that used to hold keggers regularly would also cook out of their fireplace. Odd shaped house. It, it used, it, I think it was a house that someone had turned into like a retail front, but they had then turned it into like a college almost frat house. There was four or five students living in there. They just made announcements that they're planning to try and, uh, once again, planning to try and build a hotel on campus, which they've threatened to do that before. They're threatened to do that right after I graduated, which is 2008, 2007, 2008.
But yeah, my, my palate is completely ruined compared to what it was when I was at... They did such a great job with us. I, there's so many things that I would rave about that school. Administration, not so much, but... Uh, the chefs, the staff, the people at that school are just amazing. I mean, they're, they handle over, I mean, this is a student run, they have four student, four or five student run restaurants now. Uh, they had four when I was there. Um, four plus the uh, cafe and the gym, um, which is now like a brewery. <laughs> There's a brew pub at the CIA. <laughs> um, but that wasn't there when I was there. Um, uh, I've been sitting here chatting and drinking. Forgot I was going to throw these in. Let's throw these uh, rolls in the oven here. And those are going in for 30 minutes. The oven's at 450. Oh, I realized it was great when I was there. Um, I mean, I, I still have problems with the administration of the school, but the administration of the school is not, I mean, really what's affecting the students on a regular basis. Yeah, it's a little like the government. Everyone complains about the federal government, but your, your local government is really what affects you. But, uh, yeah, a lot of good things. I mean, and they had such great people come in the chat with us and talk with us all the time. Um, I could complain about the bachelor's program being probably not developed enough, but, I mean, I was literally the second or third class to go through bachelor's. I mean, it's not like it was a fully fleshed out program when I went through it. I, it wasn't like they had all of their profess. I mean, they were still largely relying upon their, their associates professors to teach the bachelor's program. So the, the newer teachers that they brought in to bring in the, you know, the English and foreign language and all of that stuff were all relatively new. They could get away with going through uh, associates with only giving us like some basic math and, and menu planning and stuff like that. But bachelors, they had to give us some actual courses. <laughs> They've done some other good things here. They're doing some good things here in Napa. Um, I don't necessarily love how much the campus is expanding. I don't really like that they added a, I think it's a San Antonio campus and they had a Shanghai campus. Um, Shanghai I'm cool with, but San Antonio I thought was a little unnecessary. Uh, I don't think that they should have put Greystone here in Napa. I don't think that that should be a full-time college, which they have turned that into a full-time associates college. Um, and they bought Copia in Napa, which I thought was a brilliant move because that was something started up with, uh, Mondavi and Julia Ra and Julia, not Julia Roberts, Julia, Julia Child. And, uh, it, it failed and it closed. And I, I love the fact that the CIA brought it back because it's, it would be a great extension for Greystown. 
but I think Gravestone should still be the continuing co ed college it was when I was here. It was doing the like advanced uh, associates program for people who had been in the industry for years, sort of a thing, and they were doing uh, professional continuing ed, especially in the wine area. And I sort of think it should have stayed like that, but you know, you got to grow. You got to keep. That's the way businesses work, and I'm sure schools work the same way. You got to keep growing, and otherwise, you lose your employees. Um, so we'll add our egg noodles in here now. I just bought these. If you're new to my stream, I often make my own pasta. And I'm not going to add all this. I'm just going to, this is a little over a pound of pasta. I'm just going to add a couple of handfuls in here. It'll nicely uh, thicken up what we got for a liquid here. And give us some noodles in with our, our veggies. Thin layer. We'll kick this up over a boil now and we'll give this a cover and let them sort of steam to start. I also cook a lot of my pre-made pasta uh, like rice um, which if you're Italian go ahead and gasp now I don't really care um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going with uh, uh, Oh geez, I'm horrible with names. Um, gonna have to look at a book. Harold McGee. Harold McGee. Uh, he's not a food scientist, but. Uh, He's highly regarded by CIA students because we all are pushed towards his book. Um, at least they used to push us all towards his book on food and cooking. Um, which was intended to be a, he wrote it intended for the, the common housewife but when you read this book, it is not for the common housewife. <laughs> um, he has taught me in the last couple of years, there's a YouTube video of it, where you can cook all your hard pastas just like rice. You use a ratio of, of uh, one part uh, pasta to 1.2 parts water. If you're using, you know, if normal semolina pasta. And it works great. You bring it up to a boil in the pan. You start with cold water, cold pasta in a pan. You bring it up to a boil. And then you let it sit for 10 minutes, just like you're doing rice pilaf. Um, well, you're not sauteing it like pilaf, but. Uh, you let it sit for 10 minutes and. Yeah, the top will be slightly underdone, but it'll be steamed just to just to the edge of al dente, al, al dente, and uh, the bottom will be all nicely done. You have a little bit of liquid left over in the bottom pan; it'll be perfect for thickening your sauce. And you add your sauce in, and it just finishes off that little bit of uh, finish, finishing that needs on the top. Perfect pasta all the way through. Give it a good toss, um, and you're set to go and you don't have five gallons of water to deal with. Uh, without a, I don't have a dishwasher here. And so anytime I'm pulling out sock pots, anytime I'm pulling out big water pots, um, that's a pain in my ass because I gotta wash them in my hand and so they're, they're blocking the whole flow for everything else to get cleaned. <laughs>
Yeah, um, I typically use this guy, and I use a cover with it. But uh, if you look at the YouTube video, if you if you Google uh, uh, Harold McGee and uh, pasta or cooking pasta, he does it just in an open saute pan. Um, and like I said, he's not a food scientist, but he knows what the hell he's talking about. Uh, makes it a lot easier for, you know, in the case of me where I'm here with myself and just making it for me. I don't want that many more pans to clean up and that much more to deal with. And see how our rolls are looking. They've been in there 10 minutes now. They're looking like balls of dough. So our stove is back up to a simmer here. Thanks for the follow, Death Crimson. Know you've been lurking around since early on. Hope you're enjoying the evening. So we got this back to a boil. We're going to stir in those that pasta now. So let's see, what do I have that I need to do for for Wednesday? I didn't tell Legacy Wolf. He, Legacy Wolf's in here all the time. Um, I didn't tell him what I'm going to do on Wednesday. I think I'm probably going to use my chicken wings up on Wednesday. I think I'm going to do these guys. I've got uh, three or four packages of chicken wings. And I've been, I haven't tried doing uh, the cornstarch packed uh, fried chicken before so I'm gonna I'm gonna try using that excuse me wow uh, try frying chicken wings but using uh, cornstarch instead of the typical batter or uh, fried chicken style No real plans for Valentine's here. I don't have a Valentine to celebrate. Mm. So I'm um, not going to be making a uh, red velvet cake myself here or anything like that. But uh, I do have a ton of egg whites from Friday to use. So maybe we'll. I, I, was tempted to do it tonight and I didn't get to do it. I decided to do the rolls instead. But uh, maybe we'll do uh, chicken wings and angel food cake. Uh, now there's a combo. <laughs>
I was talking earlier about how corn, it just sort of bolts and you got to sell it when you got it sort of a thing when it comes to the farmer's markets. That's why I don't grow some herbs too. Like, um, on one hand, it's, it's certainly more economical for you to grow your herbs at home, especially if you got a little pot going, just your windowsill or something. Um, especially true when it comes to like rosemary and thyme and uh, chives. But uh, there's some of them like dill. Dill is incredibly hard too because dill just bolts. I mean, it goes like straight up to just to seeding. Yeah, it's just like so. At least from my experience, it's not really worth it to grow dill. It's probably better to just buy it. Um, I'm hopeful that my my. Uh, buying more compost and putting it over the top. I've had uh, cutting celery growing in my raised bed now for a couple of years now. And it's pretty much just growing wild now, which I don't mind if it pops up in a couple of places and I can use it, but it's just been going mad. And cutting celery, if you're not familiar, is just like any other celery, um, but it's got too much fiber for you to be using it. It's got too many strands. It's too tough for you to be using it for like uh, chewing it like you would normally cut and chop up celery. Um, it's still great for, it's got amazing flower, fla ah, amazing flavor in the leaves. Um, the celery itself has got amazing flavor if you're gonna use it for stock or if you're infusing it with something. But it's, it's not something you wanna chew on. It's like, you know, chewing on you know, sugar cane or chewing on, you know, piece of bark. <laughs> now I used to use it all the time for making stock, which it's a great flavor for stock. I mean, it's incredibly celery, deep celery flavor, but it's not. Uh, it's not yummy to chew on. Actually, why don't we see if I can't pull up it? Come on, I almost had it there. There we go. There we go. Let's see how this, this is what I'm talking about when it came to uh, Harold McGee. thick as it goes in and having to wrestle it apart, none of that is really necessary. Instead, you can simply take dry pasta, put it in a not that large a pot, add not that much water to it, 
just enough to cook it because the water is cold. It's not going to stick. Spread it apart, put it on the stove, and in 10, 15 minutes, it'll be just as good as when it's done the old fashioned way. So that was what I was talking about when it came to uh, doing pasta. That's actually a different video from what I watched before, but give you a good idea. It's basically the same thing. And if you ever really feel like it, I mean, if you really want to learn, you know, why you lose color in things, why you change color in things, why you, you know, what to add, acid or base, or, uh, yeah, this guy's book is <laughs> for the common housewife. <laughs> Is that the last of my wine? Yep. I am drinking. Uh, it's at the bottom of this list here. It's a Spanish white wine. And normally goes uh, 21, 25, but uh, I've got a, oh, I'm showing it to my camera that you can't even see. Um, it's a Spanish white wine. Uh, got a lot of minerality to it. It's, uh, got a lot of light, bright flavor, a lot of acid to it. It'll stand up to a lot of seafood, stand up to a lot of uh, uh, decent things. I'm not going to have much here to drink with one, with dinner, but uh, it'll go great here with the chicken. Um, this is the second time I've had this on stream. Uh, and to be honest, I bought it just because I, I enjoyed it so much the first time. And I've got such a great deal going with it here at the local supermarket. Um, like I said, $21, $25 wine, and I'm buying it for 15 so pretty nice wine if you're into minerality with your uh with your white wines which is really what i i, I i'm not uh, even though i live here in sonoma county and all the locals will hate me for saying this um when it comes to white wine i really prefer it to come from france uh, French oak and uh, uh, minerality are just so much greater in French wines than they are here in California. I mean, if you love oak, you know, California Chardonnay, but uh, that's not necessarily me. I am in love with the local Zinfandels and the local uh, uh, cabs, so at least there's that. And it's also a good, it, I also know it's a decent deal because she's really, the lady who's running the wine section is trying to get rid of this wine. She, she's getting rid of all of her European wine stu stuff because she doesn't want to have to deal with the tariffs. Which, regardless of your opinion on the tariffs and government, um... It's not fun having your wine marked up twice. Um, but she's usually pretty good. I'm talking, uh, there's a family-run supermarket here in Sebastopol. 
won't say the name, uh, that uh, is, is very well. I mean, it's a family-run operation, and they're probably one of the biggest suppliers of produce to the local restaurant scene for those that aren't going to individual farms. Uh, great place to find, you know, just everyday produce that you're going to find. I have my issues with their store, but I have my issues with everyone. <laughs> I'm picky. But they have a small wine section, and I know the lady that's running it, so it's, it's good to have those little ins to know, you know, yeah, I'm getting rid of this because I want to get rid of it. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Fierce Foodie. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm wrapping up here. We got another four minutes and 45 seconds here on the on the rolls. And uh, once the rolls are done, I'll make sure the pasta's going here. We're getting close on the pasta too. Some of it's cooked, some of it's not at this point. Eh, most of it's cooked at this point. there anymore I noticed you stopped by last my last stream so thanks for coming by again and uh, like I said three days a week hope you have a great night I think I'm going to do chicken wings on Wednesday, and then actually I think I'm going to try and do pork stock this weekend. So, uh, pork stock probably either on Friday or Sunday, probably next Sunday. Uh, I got more time to deal with stuff on Sunday, so uh, I also have more time to deal with cleaning it up after for the next stream. <laughs> so, uh, maybe we'll do pork stock on Sunday, too. Uh, I need to get some more, I need to get some, uh, more bones for that, but I have a decent amount now. big reveal here in two and a half minutes here. It's the first time I've tried this recipe. They, they look decent going in. Let's see if they handled the 450 uh, degree heat. Let's, let's see how uh, uh, crispy crunchy these guys are. Oops, not that. I didn't want to look at that. Quite happy with how this has turned out. Uh, can maybe add a little time or something along that. Well, actually, it's why we add a little time.
don't have any fresh thyme from my own plants right now. I'm having to buy it right now. Along with my plants there, I do have a thriving sage plant up front too. So if I need sage, I have local sage or self-grown sage. Let's see how our rolls look. Dark. Man. Hey. Maybe okay. A little dark, but okay. Those are rolls. Nice and hot. Let's see what the neck guy looks like if we break into one of these. Nice, crispy, crunchy. So, maybe a little less time. Maybe not a full 30 minutes. But, uh, those are some nice butter rolls. Those go good, good with some butter. Go with that. Throw a couple more dinner rolls with that. That there. Pull our knife out here so we can see that for our photo. Let's get ourselves an Instagram pic. Oh. Why not? A little pinch of Parmesan just to make things a little pretty. So, I'm happy with how turn, things turned out. I'm going to go and enjoy this. I'd like to thank all you guys for joining me tonight. Thank you for the follows that I had. And uh, I will be back on Wednesday to do uh, uh, chicken wings. I need to buy some more oil. Um, I'll see you hopefully all then. And have a great night. Let's see if there's anyone I can host. There isn't a whole lot. There isn't many... Uh, out there in the food food world that I, I'm trying to keep my hosting the food people. But, uh, let's see here. Um, I 
give me a second here. See if there's someone I can host. I want to host someone if I can. Doesn't look like there's anyone else in food and cooking. Okay. So, thank you for joining me. Uh, I will be back on Wednesday, 4.30 Pacific as usual. Uh, and I hope you see, see me then. Have a great evening, everyone.